What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be covering the U.S. versus Maxwell trial once again. This is day number nine. If you want to see the prior days that came before, you can check out my playlist. That's going to be uh, attached in the card in the top right-hand corner right now. And you can see my prior summary. So today was relatively short, as you guys can see from the length of the video. Uh, not much happened today, and that's for a reason. I'm going to explain that. Uh, but uh, right now, the government is presenting their case, and today they were only able to present one witness for their side. Uh, the government is uh, predicted to end their presentation by next week and the defense will start presenting their case. Then after both sides have gone, then the uh, ju uh, jury will deliberate on the uh, verdict. Uh, but that's ways away, but let's stick to today. So we started today with uh, one of the government witnesses called Tracy Chappell, who is a senior paralegal at FedEx. And uh, the government talked about her in the opening statements when they said that they're going to be showing some invoice from FedEx that show certain deliveries were made to Jeffrey Epstein's house that had to do with uh, the related events we're talking about here. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what they're talking about here. They don't exactly tell us or show us what the invoices are, um, but we have an idea of what they're talking about. And I'll give you guys some context on these uh, FedEx invoices in a second here. So the paralegal from FedEx was called Tracy Chapel. She was the first witness of the day. And the purpose of this uh, witness is to authenticate invoices associated with the account of Jeffrey Epstein um, from the last few months of 2002. And the victim authenticated the documents that were showed by the government, and then she was cross-examined. So we didn't get any specific details about what the invoices were related to, but I can give you guys an idea because uh, we have all seen the actually people who watch my videos have all seen my uh, series that I did a while ago called The Undisputed Evid Evidence Against Gillian Maxwell. Part of that was uh, some of the Amazon receipts that uh, that were recovered by the police. And this is just one of them. But this is the uh, authentication page for the Amazon order. But these have to be shipped by UPS or FedEx or something like that. So they don't actually show us the FedEx receipt here. This is just the Amazon receipt, but clearly it was shipped by some shipping company, either UPS or FedEx or USPS. And most of uh, Jeffrey Epstein's um, orders were apparently uh, shipped with FedEx, according to what we know. And that's what this witness is uh, is testifying to. These Amazon receipts that were uh, gathered by the authorities from Jeffrey Epstein's trash showed the following book titles. SM 101, A Realistic Introduction, Slave Craft, Roadmaps for Erotic Servitude, uh, Training with Miss Abernathy, A Workbook for Erotic Slaves and Their Owners. So this is the nature of the uh, subjects we're talking about here. And most likely these invoices are related to this because this specific document is from Virginia Roberts lawsuit, civil lawsuit against Gillian Maxwell. This is the lawsuit that uh, revealed all those emails that we got last year and as well as depositions and many other documents, uh, which I covered on my channel, made many videos about it. Um, the Ep so-called Epstein files and Gillian Maxwell files were from this lawsuit and all the unsealing that happened uh, related to this lawsuit. Okay, so so most likely, I don't know for sure because I don't, I haven't seen the FedEx invoices, but they likely have to do with the uh, the orders that were uh, placed on Amazon, and FedEx most likely shipped those uh, those Amazon orders to Jeffrey Epstein's house. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. So after the government authenticated these FedEx invoices via uh, Tracy Chapel here, then the Gillian Maxwell lawyers uh, had a chance to. Ask her some questions and of course they focused on the fact that some of these invoices had sarah kellen's name in it quote s uh, dot kellen that's what some of these invoices had so because of the fact that Sarah Kellen was working for Jeffrey Epstein, some of the invoices had her name in it. But nevertheless, Jeffrey Epstein's accounts were the ones that paid, uh, was the one that paid for these uh, these orders. Now, we don't know what the orders are, but like I said, given the context of this case, it most likely has to do with those books and also uh, the purchasing of certain sex toys that we've talked about in this case. So um, as we go forward, we'll probably find more, uh, get more details about exactly what the invoices have to do with. But right now, they have not been released. Um, but just like with the pictures that were released yesterday, things will eventually start to be released as we go down the trial. And uh, we'll know all the related details or most of the related details here. But the jury is seeing everything. So things might be sealed to the public because the judge has 
has determined for privacy reasons or some other uh, legal reason that these should be sealed. Uh, but the jury sees everything. So just because it's sealed for us, the people who are watching the case doesn't mean it's sealed for the jury. The jury sees all the relevant information in order to arrive at a conclusion. That's part of the legal system that has to be done. On a day-to-day -day basis, things that are released to the jury are not immediately released to us. So the photos that we got yesterday of Jeffrey Epstein getting a massage from Ghislaine Maxwell uh, down here, those were not uh, originally released the day that, they, that the jury saw them, but the next day they were released. So it takes time for things to be unsealed and due to privacy reasons uh, having to do with uh, with mostly the victims, some things are not going to be released to the public because the uh, victims have asked those things to be kept confidential because they don't want their names and their information released. So there are, there are a multitude of reasons why sealings, why sealed documents exist. It's not because there's some giant conspiracy by the judge. It's because it's part of the legal system. And people who don't understand it are the ones who start weaving conspiracy theories about why documents are sealed. There are very legal and logical reasons why documents are sealed by the court okay so maybe learn something about the judicial system before you start claiming that everybody involved is corrupt okay it's very frustrating now it's like it's it used to be just a small group of idiots who weave conspiracy theories but now it's, it's a growing amount of people who are consumed by this stuff and it's very frustrating for rational people who uh make evidence-based decisions and who know how the legal system work this is blackmail no mrs andrews it's the law so as I said before, Gillian Maxwell's lawyers tried to shift the blame away from Jeffrey Epstein and Gillian Maxwell and onto the lap of Sarah Kellen. They tried to do this uh, on, I think, during Caroline's uh, testimony as well by trying to claim that um, Caroline had a civil suit against Sarah Kellen and therefore, um, you know, Sarah Kellen was a bigger figure, more dangerous figure than Gillian Maxwell, which is ridiculous because both the pilots and almost everybody involved in this case has admitted that Gillian Maxwell was the number two, not Sarah Sarah Kellen. Sarah Kellen was there, sure, but she was not the number two. She was just a servant, just like uh, Marcinkova and Groff and other people that were involved. They were just co-conspirators. But Gillen Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, they were the true blue pair. Okay, they were the main people here. All right, so um, so that that's the defense's strategy: try to blame other people. They're trying to shift the blame away from Gillen Maxwell. That's I mean, that's all a defense lawyer can do is to point out another plausible person for uh, criminality instead of their own client. I mean, that's that's what they have to do, right? That's what the defense lawyers do. Uh, so this is normal for them, but there's no truthfulness behind it. They're just trying to make an argument that might be feasible to the jury. What else are they going to do? They have to say something for their defense. They're getting paid a lot of money. But uh, yeah, so that's about it. That's all that happened. So after the questioning, the cross-examination of Ms. Chapel, the uh, judge had a sidebar with, uh, with the uh, lawyers and uh, they went into the uh, judge's chambers and they talked for a while because something was happening. And we found out later that um, after the uh, the chamber's hearing that a lawyer was sick, uh, they had gotten sick and uh, the uh, the proceedings ceased for the day. So Judge Nathan came out and said, quote, I've been informed that there's an attorney in the case who is ill and therefore she'll be calling an end to the judicial proceedings for the day. So we don't know exactly what the illness is. It could be COVID. It could be something else. Um, there are other things that people can get sick with. Everybody's like COVID is on our mind. So that's the first thing we jump to. But there could be something else that they're sick with. But uh, we don't know exactly uh, what they were sick with. And we don't even know whether it's from the prosecution side or the Gill and Maxwell side. Either way. Uh, they broke for the day uh, and tomorrow we'll be picking back up. And I think the next witness to testify will be Annie Farmer. She was supposed to go today, but because of the fact that the proceedings were cut short, she did not uh, get to take the stand, but she will be taking the stand soon. All right. So that's about it for this video. Um, things ended uh, abruptly today, but we'll be picking them up uh, back up tomorrow. And uh, the government's case should be finished by next week and the defense's presentation will start. All right, that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for my future videos. And if you want to support the show, you can do so by going to Patreon. There's a link in the description box down below. And also, there will be a link in the end of the video during the credits. Thank you so much for watching. As always, peace. Mega City One. 800 million people living in the ruin of the old world and the mega structures of the new one. Only one thing fighting for order in the chaos. 
judges. 